All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Volta Ball Python, otherwise known as the Sub-Saharan Ball Python. When it comes to the Volta, I'd say most people consider it to be like the giant gene in ball pythons. A lot of them actually have a really thick body, and some of them can have like a really thick head, like twice as thick as a lot of other ball pythons. And the Voltas can get bigger than a regular ball python. You'll actually see some Voltas that are over 7,000 grams, and I've actually seen reports of people hatching out Volta hatchlings that are over 120 grams, which is like twice the size of a normal hatchling. And when it comes to the Voltas, I'd say it's not really a gene per se. If you're actually thinking about, you know, recessive, dominant, or co-dominant, it doesn't really follow your typical genetics. Essentially what it is, it's a locality specific ball python. I guess pretty much the closest thing you can compare it to would be like the dwarf reticulated pythons, where you actually have pretty much the same snake, just a smaller version of a reticulated python versus like the mainland. It's kind of the same thing, except in this case, you have the larger size ball python compared to a normal ball python. And it's kind of interesting if you actually look at the reticulated pythons, a lot of people will keep track of the percentages of the dwarf in their reticulated pythons. For example, I actually have Lucy, that's my big reticulated python that lives on my pool table, and she's actually 50% Jampea dwarf. 50% dwarf, and she comes from the island of Jampea. And kind of the, the advantage of the reticulated pythons and the dwarfs is they actually come from islands. They're completely separated from all the other reticulated pythons. So when you breed them back, you can really keep an eye on the percentages of the dwarf, the percentages of the mainland, and keep tracking it that way. And when it comes to the Volta ball pythons, essentially what it is, it's all the same land mass. So sometimes I've actually seen people getting Volta ball pythons from the Volta locality of Africa that aren't really big and thick bodied like you would think. So sometimes there can be a lot of variations in your Voltas. And I think that's one of the reasons they really don't keep track of the percentages of the Voltas in their offspring versus, you know, if you actually compare that to the, the percentages of the dwarfs in the reticulated pythons. And when it comes to the Voltas, I actually have one ball python here in my collection that I'm almost most certain that it contains Volta in it. And if you actually think about kind of the genetics of the Volta, I'd say most Voltas are wild caught, normal looking ball pythons. So probably the one that's in my collection, what someone probably did to produce that one is they probably caught like the Volta from the wild, like a normal looking snake, and then they bred it to a lemon blast. So I'm thinking even though mine looks like a Volta, it's probably 50% or less Volta from that combination, breeding it back to the original. It's kind of like it's kind of like the dwarfs and reticulated pythons. And then if you wanted to increase the amount of Volta, which essentially what you'd have to do is you take the offspring and then you breed it back to the parent to keep increasing the percentage of the giant gene in the ball pythons. So I'm not sure exactly uh, what percentage that is, is if, if you can actually figure out percentages or not, because it kind of all blurs together. But I'd say in most cases, people are thinking, of a larger bodied ball python when it comes to the Voltas. So what I want to do from here is I want to actually show you this Volta ball python that I have here in my collection. And then I want to jump over to the internet. I want to show you a couple tricks on how you can search on different websites to locate Volta ball pythons. And I want to show you kind of the locality specific location in Africa where these Voltas come from. All right, so here's the ball python that I think might be a Volta. This girl's name is Poplar, and look at how big Poplar is. She is a massive snake. As a matter of fact, she is probably full of eggs. I'm breeding her this year, and she is completely gravid. I don't really want to move her too much because she is so huge. And I kind of wanted to show you her head because her head seems like it's a lot bigger than a normal ball python. So take a look at this. Her head is really super big. If you take a look at that head, look at how big that head is on that girl. It's like super big, a lot bigger than a normal ball python that you'd normally find. And she's definitely a thicker bodied than a lot of your other ball pythons. She's a really big girl. She lays really super big clutches of eggs. 
And a lot of people say that they believe that a lot of the Voltas kind of have more of an orange color or more of a gold color in the Voltas. Although I have seen a lot of people, well, they'll actually get like a whole bunch of hatchlings, the wild caught hatchlings from the Volta area. And sometimes I'd say they can really vary. Sometimes they look really dark. Sometimes they look orange. Sometimes they look yellow. It's kind of like the normal variability of a normal ball python. So I don't think there's any one particular color that you'll actually see on the majority of your Voltas. But let me tell you, if you have a really super big ball python like this, that's really big and beefy with a really big head like this girl, you could be pretty sure that you might have a Volta ball python. All right, so I want to jump over here on the internet and I want to show you a few things that you might find interesting about the Volta ball python. And the first one is kind of a back door on how to search morph market for Volta ball pythons. And I was actually over there, you can actually try to do a keyword search for Volta and let me tell you, nothing comes up. You actually won't find anything if you just do a search for Volta. But what you can actually do is you can come over here to the Google advanced search. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I use this quite a bit. Essentially what you can do is you can actually find a specific word like Volta and then you can actually come all the way down here and search the site or domain and you can type in morphmarket.com and when you actually do the, the advanced search it'll find all the pages on morphmarket.com that contain the word Volta. It's a pretty powerful tool and actually if, if you're wondering how to get to the Google advanced search you can just search anywhere for Google advanced search and you'll actually find a link to this page over here. So from here, I actually found a couple examples of Voltas over here on Morph Market. And take a look at this. This is a wild caught dinker ball python, which is actually listed as a Volta. So take a look at this. If you actually read the description down here, it says uh, he acquired this boy in May of 2017. He was wild caught from the Volta sub-Saharan region of Africa. And what I find really interesting is it seems like a lot of these Voltas have interesting belly markers on almost every single one that I've seen. It almost looks like het pied markers, which is, I don't know, is this just kind of random where people are picking out the ones that look like they have more promise as far as a belly pattern or if it's just common as far as the locality. A lot of the Voltas will actually have this interesting lines on either side of the belly. A lot of times if you just have one copy of the Pi gene, you'll actually see markers like this along the belly, which, uh, which is kind of interesting. But other than that, it looks pretty much just like a normal ball python. A lot of them are thicker bodied and a lot of them have really big heads. And I've actually seen some really super big ones. And I don't know if you can actually tell the difference between this and a normal ball python unless you actually put them side by side and really compare them and look at the size difference between the two. And it seems like in a lot of these Voltas, there is a huge size difference between the Voltas and just your regular ball pythons. So I actually found this one over here, another Volta over here on Morph Market. This is the only other one I found, which is pretty amazing. Not very popular that people will list their ball pythons as Voltas. And this is actually a Het Red Azanthic. And if you actually look down here at the description, it, was, it says it's a beautiful Het Red Azanthic produced from a Red Azanthic crossed with a Volta. So this has part of the giant team, the Volta mixed in. I I don't think a lot of people call it the giant gene. I just th think people call it the Volta. And it gets a little bit confusing because a lot of people don't really know what the Volta is and how variable it can be. And potentially, it may or may not be a thicker bodied snake. In some cases, I've actually seen a really big size difference between the Voltas and all the other ball pythons. So take a look at this. I thought this was interesting too. I actually came over here to Wikipedia and looked for the definition of sub-Saharan. And you might be surprised at this. Everything, take a look at this map over here. Everything below this line right here, all, all this green area is sub-Saharan. And pretty much everything up on top here is like desert up here on the top of Africa. And pretty much all the ball pythons all come from 
from the sub-Saharan part of Africa. So it's kind of interesting. A lot of people say it's the Volta slash sub-Saharan when in fact all ball pythons are actually sub-Saharan. They all come from the sub-Saharan location of Africa. But if you're wondering where Volta is, I actually pulled up this map too. And if you actually take a look at this, this is, there's a line right across here in Africa that this is the Volta region up here. And if you actually look at this, this is the Volta River. So this locality right here is where a lot of your Voltas are actually coming out of. And if you actually zoom out a little bit, you can actually see right where this is. This is actually in the bottom part of Ghana over here, right along the ocean down here. This is actually the Gulf of Guinea, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. I didn't even know that was the Gulf of Guinea down there until I just looked. But most of your ball pythons, they actually come from Ghana, Togo, and Benin over here in West Africa. And this is like the main place where you'll find most of your wild ball pythons over here. And of course, pretty much everything in the green here, this is all sub-Saharan. All your ball pythons are going to come from this location over here. So I thought it was kind of interesting to kind of see where they're coming from as far as kind of the global map here. You can see where everything is and where the ball pythons are coming from, the locality specific place that these ball pythons are coming from. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Tina Moon asks, I just bought a hidden gene woma ball python. What should I breed to him? And that is a very good question. And I'd say probably my number one favorite hidden gene woma combination would definitely have to be the Inferno. And that is the combination of the hidden gene woma, the pastel, the yellow belly, and the granite. So essentially what it is, is two brightening genes with the pastel and the yellow belly. And when you mix it with the hidden gene woma, a lot of times you'll get a really bright yellow snake. A lot of times they'll They'll actually have like tiger stripes on the side of the snake. I've actually seen some really impressive infernos. And when it comes to the Inferno, you can actually go over to like morphmarket.com and search for Inferno, and it'll actually break it out into the individual genes, the hidden gene woma, the pastel, the yellow belly, and the granite. And I'd say you could probably drop the granite from the Inferno. Technically, it has granite in the mix for like, you know, the strict definition of an Inferno. But essentially what the granite does is it gives you a little bit of pixelation on the side of the snake and the pattern. And I've actually seen a lot of people well they'll do the three gene combination drop the granite and still list the combination as an inferno it doesn't have that much of an effect and another thing you can actually do is if you actually go in for the inferno you can add other brightening genes to the mix so you can actually add like orange dream or super orange dream or fire to those other brightening genes like the pastel and the yellow belly mixed in with the hidden gene woma to give you some really amazing bright combinations so that is pretty much it. One more thing I wanted to show you at the end is I wanted to show you the head of Bobby compared to the head of that Volta ball python that I think is a Volta here in my collection. And if you actually look at the difference, Bobby is a pretty big snake. He is an eight year old male. The other one was a little bit older. She was, believe it or not, she was 11 years old. So a little bit older than Bobby. But look at the size of the head on Bobby compared to that Volta. Definitely a smaller head on Bobby compared to that other head on my other lemon blast ball python. He definitely doesn't have any Volta in there and I should have compared him side by side but you can definitely see he definitely has a smaller head compared to that other ball python. So that's kind of the scoop on the Volta. It would be interesting if you can actually find someone who's specifically working on the Voltas, trying to make ball pythons a little bit bigger by working Volta into a lot of these other genes. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.